Hi friends, Cole here. Thank you so much for joining me. I just wanted to do a little bit of opening for the neck and the shoulders and also just to release some, some tension, not only physically and right here, but a little tension in the heart space. This has been incredibly challenging um, few months for so many reasons and first I just want to say that anything that's came up during this period is so valid. The anxiety is appropriate. The anger is appropriate. Um, yeah, and the sadness and also the joy. So I feel like when major things happen we have a tendency to feel like we should feel a certain way. We all process things differently. And we all have a spectrum of emotions, which we continuously flow in and out of. It's never this or this or this or this. It's always shifting and it should be always shifting. Sometimes we, we don't want to feel certain things and um, we think that we can push those to the side and sometimes we can for a little bit. I, I did that for a long time with, um, with my substance addiction. But we can like push away our anger, we can push away our sadness, but really it doesn't go away. It feels quite clever for a little bit, but it really doesn't go away. That's actually not what's happening. It's being repressed and it comes out in ways that we don't want it to. So I really encourage you and me to allow things to be felt um, our emotions or messages to tell us when something needs to change, when something is safe, when something is unsafe. Um, so I think we really learn along the way how to listen and how to shift accordingly. You know, our bodies, um, yeah, our bodies are quite amazing whenever we learn, uh, learn how to listen. So. But speaking to the neck and the shoulders, so it has been a kind of a collective stress lately, has been a theme. So whenever we're under a physical stress or a mental stress, some of the things that tend to happen is that we begin to round the shoulders forward, we lift them up a little bit, and what we're doing is we're protecting our heart. This comes from our animal bodies, from this is a place of big vulnerability, like whenever you see a like a tiger going for its prey, or I mean, in the ant, not doesn't just have to be a tiger, but most most things, you know, these are our, this is where our heart is, this is where our throat is, very vulnerable areas. So we tend to protect here. And then there's a feedback loop that when we are like this, then that causes stress as well. So it's kind of like the chicken or the egg. It's both happening at the same time. Another thing that happens is we're like this a lot just from our cultural stuff. So while the computer might not necessarily be stressing us out, our body's in that position and that position tells our body that we're in stress, if that makes sense. So both of these things are happening. We're actually having stressful things happen and then we're putting our bodies in positions that are telling it that it's stressed. So a few things that we can do to help um, shift that narrative in our mind and in our body. And let's just begin by doing some shoulder rolls. So we're just gonna do some movement first and we'll add some breath and a little bit of shaking too. So just rolling the shoulders back, finding some um, mobility in the joints. And then let's, this is gonna look a little weird, but it feels good. Bring the shoulders or bring the elbows. So roll it back, kinda of like you're backwards swimming now. So we're just finding some joint mobility. You might feel some creaks or some cracks my right shoulder for sure is making some noise. And then maybe make it a little bit bigger. So really just kind of feeling in here, feeling spaciousness. And every time we do this, we're opening the front of the body as well. I just tell you how good the sun feels. It's actually winter here. Um, I know that if you're watching in the States or in Europe, it's summer there, but down here in Australia, it's winter. So this body is soaking up the sun. And then maybe some at the same time, open up the arms. So I'm gonna curl in as I come forward and then open up. So we can feel the contrast, curl in 
and open. Let's use the breath here too. So exhale, curl. Inhale, open. It's like a really exaggerated cactus arms. Exhale, curl. Inhale, open. Exhale, curl. Inhale, open. Beautiful. And let's release that down. Let's get into the neck just a little bit. Right shoulder, sorry, right arm will reach out towards the right. Left ear over towards the left shoulder. So we're getting lots of space here on the right side. So what I like to do in some different options is you can press through the heel of the hand, pressing away. This is, I really like that. I feel it the most intense here. You can also just reach through the fingers. That's actually just a different type of a tense. So feel it out in your own body. And then some more variables. You can rotate the head up and down. You can also move the arm. So you may have done this with me before. It's one of my favorite neck stretches. But really bring the attitude of investigation here. Because this is going to be different every day. It's a rather simple posture, some simple movements. But what we find are always different. So I'm kind of moving my arm up and back, a little kind of fluid motion. Maybe you stay in one place. It's a different type of intensity. But notice what happens when you find a spot of adhesion. In my body, what I want to do is I want to curl my shoulders up and my body wants to take on this, this, uh, this posture of protection. So we repattern, we practice repatterning here by extending the exhale reiterating this openness in the heart, like reminding ourselves, no, it's okay. Drop the shoulders, exhale. So we start these slow steps towards repatterning right here. And about five more rounds of breath, just exploring, moving the arm, moving the head, and seeing what's going on on the right side of the neck. Beautiful, and release. Inhale, open both the arms up, heart center forward, gaze up. And exhale, right arm over left. Give yourself a big hug and curl in. You can feel opening on the muscles on the sides of the spine here. Maybe you round forward even more. And then inhale, open up, big heart open, throat open, switch sides, left arm on top, same thing. About three rounds of breath here. Curl in. Muscles on the sides of the spines, upper, upper shoulders are opening. And inhale, open. Let's get into the neck on the other side. So same, um, same thing, but it's going to be completely different probably over here. Left arm comes out, right ear to the shoulder. Push through the heel of the hand. So maybe you're still for a bit and then you start to find some movement or whatever feels good. But again, this attitude of investigation, of curiosity, so you're not judging the tightness or anything like that. You're just noticing where it is, how it's different from the other side, different sensations that it gives. So you're really in control of this here, how much you want to drop the shoulder, move the arm. And then every few moments, remind yourself, and I'll remind you as well, Drop the shoulders down. Mine always start to creep up. Bring the heart center forward. Exhale. Just some reminders. And slowly come up. Make a big T with the arms. Open heart forward. Palms up. And then exhale. Let's cross right arm on top. We're gonna take eagle arms. So we're really gonna get into the upper back here. 
So I'm going to round and push my elbows away. Tuck everything in. Now pull the elbows in towards the belly. And then inhale up and back. Exhale, curl in round. And inhale, arch as you come back. Once more. Exhale. And inhale, open the arms wide again. Big T, palms up. And we'll switch sides. Exhale, left arm on top. And I'll turn so you can see. For just a moment, bring the elbows away just to feel that stretch. And then bring the elbows to the belly. And we'll move with breath. Inhale, lift. And curl. Lift and curl. Once more, lift and curl. And release the arms, big opening palms up, heart open, and release the shoulders. And I want to show just a breathing exercise that can really help to kind of soothe and settle. And it's really just, we can call it a humming breath, quite simple. But what it does is the vagus nerve, the top of the vagus nerve is right up here in our throat. This can be really nice if we're feeling kind of stressed out, a little bit of nervous. You can actually just tap right up here onto the throat. Also where the throat chakra lives, if you're thinking about it that way. But some other ways that we can get some vibration right here to activate the vagus nerve, which activates the parasympathetic system, which allows us to chill out is by any type of vibration. So, ha, ah, or hmm, the humming, that's what I want to focus on is do a little humming breath. Um, you can also flutter the lips, some different, some different ways to do this, but it's all about the same thing. But we'll do the humming breath. So for, mm, let's do 10 rounds of breath. Let's go for 10. So on the exhale, you're going to hum. For as long as you can. So eight more like this. You can close the eyes down or you can keep them open. Two more. And begin to come to a regular breath and notice the sensation in the body. I feel way more rooted. Almost a little <laughs> really grounded. Almost a little uh, stony in the best of ways. Calm soft. So maybe just noting a few things that you feel in your body, sensations. And then begin to open your eyes up. Sometimes it's the really little, they kind of feel like little magic tricks. And my whole energy is like much calmer. 
Do a couple more um, movements for the shoulders. Just to really kind of get in there. I'm gonna open up the arms and lift the palms up. We're gonna close them and grab for opposite elbows. On an inhale, we'll open the arms, turn the palms down, and exhale, grab opposite elbows. Kind of remember which side that you're doing, because um, we'll do the opposite on the way back, yeah? Notice if the shoulders wanna roll in here, if it's too much to grab the elbows, or that if you have to roll the shoulders in to get there, then come out a little bit. You can grab the wrists even. We just wanna keep the shoulders rolling back. Inhale, let's open the arms, lift the palms up, and exhale, other, other direction, grab the elbows. And here, let's try add on a little bit. We'll pull apart a little bit. So you can add some resistance. You should feel that in the shoulders. And then inhale, open the arms, palms down. Exhale, grab opposite elbows or the wrists, opposite direction. Roll the shoulders back. and release. Some more shoulder rolls, moving back, moving forward. And then bring the, the ear towards the shoulder and we're gonna do some rolls from shoulder to shoulder. So left ear to the shoulder, chin to chest, right ear to shoulder. And just continue with that, side to side. Keep the shoulders rolling down and back. I can feel mine coming up a little bit, especially like when my ear gets to my right shoulder. It's like my left shoulder wants to lift up, like it's, I'm, like it's coming with me a little bit. So continue to keep the integrity of this open heart, shoulders dropped as you move side to side. And I wouldn't notice that unless I was really thinking about it and being aware of it. It's one of those nuances that often we won't notice that our body's doing it. So I really invite you to notice the little micro movements and the nuances. And let's slowly come back to center. And close your eyes down. I just wanna take a moment now that we've moved the body a little bit and have a little bit of opening to check in with what's going on. I'm gonna put my hat on. The sun's coming up here. So close your eyes. You can bring the palms up in your lap. Uh, this is kind of like a gesture of receiving. When the palms are up, this is what it means to me. This is the symbol, symbolism that it has to me. If you're wanting to feel a little bit more grounded, then maybe put the palms down and place them on your knees, whichever feels more resonant. Press down through the sit bones and lift through the crown of the head and that whole lengthening the spine in between the tailbone and the crown of the head. So lots of space there. I'm just going to give a few prompts and reflections. And just feel into the energy in the body and any emotions that come up without coming into a story about them, but just noticing the emotion. There's a difference in saying, I feel, I feel frustrated, I feel angry, or I feel sad and then saying, I feel sad because this, 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 and this, or I'm angry because this, 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 and this. For this exercise, just notice the feeling and just be with the feeling. And then what does that feeling feel like? Are there, is there a color to it? Is there edges to it? And where is it in your body? In the chest, in the belly, in the head? So by allowing ourselves to feel the emotion, then it's allowed to give us its message and move on. So we're learning to be a captive audience to our, our body and our, and our heart. I don't know how they got this number, but I've, I've read many times um, that they've done studies that if we don't attach a story to a feeling, then the feeling passes in 90 seconds. Personally, I'm a ruminator, so I think, 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 and I can think about something that happened long ago for a long time. 
And when I'm doing that, I'm keeping the emotion stuck. Rather than feeling it and letting it go, I'm keeping it in my head. So often we want to come out of the thinking mind into the feeling body. We want to feel it. And then another inquiry I'll give you is, is there something that you haven't been allowing yourself to feel? So normally there's emotions that we like um, better than other ones. It's quite natural. But are you allowing yourself to feel all of them? Is there anything that you have been not allowing yourself to feel? And you don't have to go there right now. I just want to acknowledge that maybe I should spend some time with that grief. Maybe I should spend some time in that anger or just acknowledging it. doesn't mean we have to go there. And if you're not sure, another question, another inquiry that can be helpful is, you know, what emotion is the most challenging for you? So even if you can't identify it right in this moment, then maybe you have a tendency to not allow yourself to feel anger. Like I mentioned at the beginning, we have these judgment values on our emotions when everything is valid and everything has a message and anger has been incredibly appropriate lately. It's like, how do we, how do we voice it? How do we express it? Or how do we repress it It acts quite differently in that space. So these are just some inquiries. These are also really great to journal about if you'd like to journal about. The more that we can get to know ourselves and our emotions and the messages behind them that our body is giving us, we can get more aligned with ourselves and then be more present in the world. And we all need to show up for that right now. Thank yourself for showing up. Thank you for letting me be part of your practice. Let's bring our hands together. Thumbs at the third eye and let's bow forward to seal our practice and together we say namaste. Thank you all for joining Me and Yoga TX, uh, we've been so blessed to be part of your practice, whether you're uh, just now joining us or we've been part of your practice for years now. Uh, Please like, share, and subscribe. We love to hear your input, your comments. I'd love to hear what comes up for you in the little meditation and the reflections. Um, Yeah, I find this inquiry really, really interesting, especially with um, the challenges of yeah, what's going on right now? The racial tensions and the um, the pandemic, and just really, this is exacerbated. But life in life in general, there's always something happening. But it's been very exacerbated lately. And I just again want to remind remind ourselves that our emotions are not bad, um, and they are very appropriate, especially when utilized the same way. You know, anger can be transformative. Sadness can be, can break chains, you know. Allowing ourselves to grieve can unshackle us. Um, It's all about being able to welcome. It is not easy, but it's possible and it's worth the energy to get to know ourselves more and to, to heal. So, yeah. All right. Thanks for joining me. If you want to learn more about me, coldchanceyoga.com, all kinds of things there. And I am going to enjoy a little walk on the beach. Love from down under Australia. And I'll see you on your mat next time.